Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Word of the Lord. James over here with you. And as always, we're glad you are watching, and we hope you are ready to study God's Word with us tonight. I uh, am going to be uh, discussing a uh, recent uh, uh, event that took place, a recent announcement that you might have seen on the news. And we're going to be discussing the Bar Church, uh, something that we've discussed before, but not necessarily the way that you think. And so uh, it's a different kind of bar church, if, if there is such a thing as a different kind of bar church. But before we get started, I want to give you our contact information here so you can reach me. 250 The Boulevard is where we meet, uh, 276-340-2653 or 336-394-5721, word from the Lord at gmail.com or awftldvd at gmail.com if you would like, if you would like to... Uh, 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 Contact me that way, uh, email, uh, uh, DVD request or so forth. We'd be glad to uh, to get that out to you just as quick as we can. Also, if you are uh, uh, in the uh, Martinsville or the Danville area, here's the kind of information for the brethren there, 823 Starling Avenue. Uh, they're in Martinsville where the brethren meet <clears throat> on Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, Sundays and Tuesday nights is where the brethren meet, 120 American Legion there in Danville. And uh, I, I know that you'll be warmly uh, welcomed there. As a matter of fact, tonight we have some visitors with us at our Bible study there at, at the, on the boulevard who said that they have uh, uh, been talking to a member of the church in uh, Danville who uh, had invited uh, a third party to come to Bible study. And uh, the visitor that was with us uh, works with one of the members of the church at Danville and so uh, they said, uh, uh, she said, you know, she said, we're going to see, we're going to be going over and study the Bible with James tonight. So, so small world people are, are, are discussing the Bible, interested in the Bible, and we hope that if you're one of those that you'll come out and visit with us anytime you can. We'd be glad to, uh, to see you and meet you. Also, uh, I, I feel like I need to apologize. I haven't been announcing this, but uh, what does the Bible say on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on WHIGTV.com? Brother Johnny Robertson is, uh, is uh, conducting that program coming out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, uh, Tuesday night at 9 p.m., uh, WHIGTV.com, and I think Mark discussed some of that tonight. Did you not? <clears throat> okay. Well, maybe not. Or what, What's going on? Okay. Anyway, we hope that you will watch that, and uh, we uh, know that, as always, you'll be uh, getting to study God's Word uh, anytime you watch a word from the Lord, what does the Bible say in these programs? We, we know that you will, uh, uh, and you should know that you are welcome to call in and ask questions and examine what we teach because that's, that's what we're here for. That's what we do. So we hope that you will, uh, um, avail yourself of that, uh, of that opportunity. Tonight, I want to start off with a comment that was made uh, on Facebook not too long ago, but it's made, been made by other people as well. And the idea is that people seem to think that when we teach that the Bible teaches that there is only one kind of church and that it is the church of Christ and that it is the only church we buy in the Bible, they think that we're being inconsistent or that we are misrepresenting the truth because there are so many other churches of Christ, they call them the church of Christ, that don't believe what we believe. Now, here's a comment. This is uh, Josh Jones. He's the, the Greek scholar. You may recall he uh, called in on the program one time with Johnny and uh, claimed to be able to read the Greek and he couldn't read the Greek, so we called him the Greek scholar, affectionately, of course. But uh, he writes this. He said, all your church is is a denomination just like the rest. There are even other churches of Christ that believe different than yours. You might need to Google that. Well, I responded to him and said, well, number one, I don't have a church. But number two, you can Google all you want to and find all sorts of things. What we're concerned about is not whether you can find your, your church that you're in on Google. It's whether you can find the church that you're in in the Bible. So why don't you Google this? Why don't you do a search on this and see if you can find the Baptist church in the Bible? But as far as all the different churches of Christ that believe differently than what we teach, there's a simple answer to that. There's a simple solution to understanding why there are some groups that may call themselves the Church of Christ yet are doing things differently. Here's another comment that he makes. He says, did you choose not to talk about the differences with, uh, within the church of, 
Church of Christ, James, I knew you would. Uh, you know it's true. You're all just another denomination. Well, friends, the church you read out in the Bible is not a denomination. It is the church. Everything else is simply a copycat, break-off, uh, imitation of the original true church that Jesus built and that he said he would build, Matthew 16, 18, and that came to pass, had its beginning in Acts chapter 2. Now, this is the true church you read about in the Bible. It's the church of Christ. Now, the reason why the differences that are within the church of Christ exist is the same reason why there are differences in denominations that differ from the church of Christ. It all comes down to the same basic solution, and that is people don't want to follow the Bible. Now, there may be some groups that call themselves the Church of Christ, that identify themselves as the Church of Christ, but they're far from it. There are some groups in Danville, I know, that call themselves the Church of Christ, South Side, North Side, East Side, West Side, whatever, Church of Christ, but they are not the Church of Christ as you read about in the Bible. They don't pattern themselves like this church. They have in mechanical instruments and music. So I know right then that they are not the same as the church you read about in this book. Now, just because someone calls themselves or identifies themselves as the church of Christ, does not mean that indeed they are identical to the kind of church you read about in the Bible. And so what we're saying is while the name is important, it goes beyond, it is goes further than simply having the right name. It is simply, it also is doing things the way the church in the New Testament did them. So there may be some churches of Christ, and there are in fact some churches of Christ in this area, groups of people that call themselves the church of Christ that believe differently than we do. And the reason why we don't associate with them or the reason why we wouldn't identify with them or fellowship with them or have interminglings with them is because of this. Jesus said in Matthew 7 and verse 21, he says, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. When people don't do the will of the Father, they can say what they want to, but the bottom line is what you do. It's not what you say, but it's what you do. You can call yourself the Church of Christ, but that doesn't mean that you are. See, any more than I can say that, the, uh, that, that my house is uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, but that doesn't mean that it is. See, what we're talking about is more than simply what's on the, on the, on the outside, what's over the door. What is important as well as the name is what you teach on the inside. Now, friends, you may be driving down the road and you may see a sign that says the Church of Christ meets here, and you'll know, number one, that that identifies that group as a group of people who claim to be doing what the Bible says. But now on further examination, you may find out that, no, in fact, they're not doing what the Bible says. Now, I would stop and investigate a church, that, a building that had the sign that said the Church of Christ meets here. I would investigate it to see if, in fact, they are doing what the Bible says. But you know what? If I'm going down the road and I'm looking for the church that you read about in the Bible, and I know that it's identified as the Church of Christ, if I go down the road and I see on a, bu a, a building or a sign that says the Baptist church meets here, I'm not even going to stop because I know, number one, that the church that you read about in this book is not even closely resembled the Baptist church. It's not certainly not identified as the Baptist church. Why would I even stop? So what we're trying to show you is the reason why we're different is because we're following different doctrines. We are doing different things. People who claim to be the Church of Christ, remember the Church of Christ, and yet are not, is be, it's because they are not doing what the Father said. Now, friends, this is what we're trying to get you to understand. There is only one kind of church in the Bible. And everybody who is a member of that church that you read about in the Bible, everyone who's a member of the Church of Christ that you read about in the Bible, is unified in as much as they are following the same pattern, as they're following the same teachings, as they're doing the same thing. Notice what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Now Paul is going to make a statement that we can understand as the, uh, 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 as the pattern for which we are, are following. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 17, Paul said that he teaches the same thing in all churches. Okay? Now, 
what that simply means is, is everywhere Paul went, the doctrine was always the same. Now, how do we know that? We know that because he sent uh, Timothy and he sent guys like Titus around, and they all taught the same thing. They all preached the same thing. I'm going to, sorry to have my Bible program up. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For this cause I've sent to you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now, what Paul did was he taught the same thing, and it was so same, it was so exact, it was so identical to what he taught everywhere else that he could send Timothy to Corinth, which is where this letter is being written. And also we can find Timothy later on in Ephesus teaching the same thing. Because all the churches in the beginning were the same kind of churches. Now, friends, that's not possible today. It's not possible to say that the Baptist church is the same kind of church as the church of Christ, or it's not the same kind of church as the Methodist church. It's not the same kind of church as the Pentecostal church because they all teach something differently. So we know there are different kinds of church, but the Bible only knows one kind of church. And that is the kind of church that I'm a member of. I'm a member of the church of Christ that teaches and follows what the Bible says. Now, if the one kind of church that you read about in the Bible is that kind of church because of what it follows or because of what it teaches, because of the rules that it follows, guess what? It can stop teaching the very thing that makes it the church of Christ and can become a different kind of church. That doesn't mean that it is, is now the same kind. It, it means it's a different. It doesn't mean that all these churches who teach different things are part of the church of Christ, even though they're differently. No, they are different. There are different kinds of churches because of what they teach. See, what you teach is what makes you what kind of of, of religious group you are. Look at this. In 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. Now remember, Timothy, Timothy was, in, was, was going to be sent to Corinth to teach the same things that Paul taught in every church. Now look at this. In 1 Timothy 1 and verse 3, guess where we find Timothy? Paul says, I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Now, friends, think about that. Paul said he taught every, the same thing in every church. So here he is going into Macedonia. Now, one of the chief cities of Macedonia was Thessalonica. Well, we have a letter to the Thessalonians in the Bible. But yet here's Timothy abiding at Ephesus, who previously we saw that he was going to Corinth, and they're all going to teach the same thing. Why? Because it's the same kind of church. And it's the same kind of church because of the same kind of doctrine. But Paul tells Timothy, you need to charge some that they don't teach a different doctrine. Because a different doctrine means that it belongs in a different kind of church. Now friends, the reason why there are some churches of Christ that are not unified with us, that, not, that we don't have unity with, that we don't have fellowship with, that we don't have association with, is because they're teaching a different doctrine. They have gone into another doctrine. Notice this. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 16, here again, Paul admonishes Timothy, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Well, if doctrine doesn't matter, why should Timothy even worry about it? Take heed unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt save thy, both save thyself and them that hear thee. It seems to me, friends, that what you teach is important. And Paul tells Timothy, teach the same doctrine that I teach in every church. Teach the same doctrine as, uh, as I teach everywhere I go. All the churches, the same kind of churches, are to get the same kind of doctrine. Because a different kind of doctrine makes a different kind of church. Now friends, when we say that the unity, uh, that uh, the churches of Christ are unified, it should be understood that we're saying that churches of Christ who all follow this book are unified. There are some folks, there are some folks in the church of Christ that claim to be members of the church of Christ that won't follow this book. 
They won't teach this book. They don't hold up this book. And it can be to the point that they can stop following the Bible. They can stop following the doctrine that makes them the church of Christ. Now look what Paul says to the folks in, uh, in Colossae. Colossians chapter 1. Sorry about that. Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. He says, if ye continue in the faith, if ye continue grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I am Paul made a minister. Now, think about it, friends. If the doctrine, a certain kind of doctrine, makes people a member of, the, of a certain kind of church, it stands to reason that if they move away from that certain kind of doctrine and they move toward a different kind of doctrine, if they don't continue in the faith, if they're not grounded and settled, if they are moved away from the gospel, guess what? They can become a different kind of church and no longer be identical to the church you read about in the New Testament. Now someone says, well, is that even possible? Yes, it's possible. It's possible because the church at Ephesus was a faithful congregation of the one true church. That is the church that Jesus said, I'm going to build, Matthew 16, 18. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So the church at Ephesus obeyed the gospel, the one kind of gospel that made them Christians and made them members of the church of Christ. They obeyed that gospel. Acts 19 is where you find them hearing the gospel, and they obeyed that gospel. Don't run to Ephesians chapter 2 and say, well, that's where they, that's where they uh, uh, became Christians. No, they became Christians in Acts 19. The book of Ephesians is, going to, is a letter that's written to people who are already Christians. But the church at Ephesus, because they obeyed this one kind of doctrine, made them a congregation of the one true church. In other words, they were going to be identical. They were going to have unity with all other congregations that taught this same doctrine. That's why Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 verse 3, the verse we just read, charge them that they teach no other doctrine. Why? Because if another doctrine comes in, you become a different kind of church. How do we know? How do we know that's the case? I want you to consider this. In Acts chapter 20, and I'm going to have to pull this up so that we can all read it a little clear, uh, a little clearer. But in Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20 and verse uh, 28 is where we're going to begin. I want you to notice this. Now, Paul is talking to the elders of the church at Ephesus. Let's just go back up here to verse uh, 17, where Paul calls the elders of the church at Ephesus. He sent from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. So he's talking to members of the church at Ephesus. The church where he tells Timothy, you need to tell some that they don't teach another doctrine. You need to tell them to abide in the same doctrine. Meditate upon the same doctrine. Teach the same doctrine so that you'll save both them and, uh, and you. All right? Don't get away from another doctrine. Well, he tells them in Acts chapter 20, verse 17, he says, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm talking to you. And when he gets to talking to them, the elders at Ephesus, notice what he says. Verse 28, he says, Take heed unto yourselves uh, and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which, is, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know, now watch this, for I know that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, and here's the key, also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Now here's my question, friends. If Ephesus, that was indeed uh, a church of Christ, that was identical to the church that we are trying to get people to get back to, if they're identical, they obeyed the gospel, they followed this gospel, they became members of the church of Christ, if they were warned about a group of people coming in speaking perverse things. Now, friends, that's not the same thing as the gospel. That's a different kind of gospel. 
That's a different kind of doctrine. If they were warned not to teach some other doctrine, some perverse things, because it would draw people away from the truth. Friends, do you think for a moment that a group of people who teach something different, something perverse, and draw disciples away to become another kind of church, do you think that they are really identical to the church you read about in the Bible? I submit to you that if a congregation of people who are members of the one kind of church that you read about in the Bible start following another doctrine, start doing things differently than the doctrine that they obeyed, start doing differently than the, than the doctrine that you read about in this book, then they can become a different kind of church, can they not? Now that is the very reason why in this area people think that we're inconsistent because we never talk about the churches of Christ in this area that we don't agree with. Let me tell you something, friend. There's some folks in the church of Christ claim to be members of the church of Christ that teach different doctrines. There's one right over here. Where am I? There's one over here not, a, not two or three blocks away from where I'm standing right now that will teach error on marriage and divorce. You know what? We don't have association with them. They are teaching another doctrine. They're teaching another doctrine. So, so why would we associate them? We don't have unity with them because unity is based upon the Word, teaching the same thing. And they don't teach the same thing. So why is it that you find it so surprising that there may be people who claim to be members of the Church of Christ or claim to be a part of the Church of Christ that we don't fellowship or that we don't associate with when what we're saying to all of you people who are in the denominational world, you yourselves don't have unity with all the other folks, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Pentecostals, the Lutherans, or whatever. You don't have unity with amongst yourselves because you are teaching different doctrines. Well, it shouldn't surprise you that there may be some who claim to be members of the Church of Christ that teach a different doctrine that we don't have fellowship with, that we're not in association with. Why? Because they're teaching different doctrines, holding on to something that's different, and that then really makes you a different kind of church. Ultimately, it makes you a different kind of church, not identical to the church you read about in the Bible. Now, here... <clears throat> it's what we're trying to get you to see. Friends, the reason why this is so important is because when members of the Church of Christ depart to teach another doctrine, it's very, very sad. Now, friends, if Paul warned about the departure from the faith and he warned about speaking perverse things, it shows that he is clearly saying that that would make you become a different kind of church. Ultimately, it would turn you into a different kind of church because you would start teaching other things, different things, another gospel. And in Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9, he says another gospel is going to bring condemnation. So teaching a different doctrine, teaching a different gospel is going to make you a different kind of church and ultimately, it's going to condemn you because you're not following the truth. Now, you say, well, why, why go through all that, James? I thought you were going to talk about a bar church. Well, we are. You know, in the past, we have talked about churches that, have start, that are going to start bars. And then I think, Mark, Mark, what was the one that you talked about just the other day that was going to have drinks? The First Episcopal Church in Danville. First Episcopal Church in Danville. I was going to start having, having church in a bar. Well, we want to show you that we're consistent. That is wrong. That is not following the New Testament pattern. It's not following what the Bible says here. But just to show you that we are an equal opportunity uh, criticizer of anyone who does not follow this book, I want to show you, bring to your attention something that you might have seen on the news. This is the Southern Hills... Church of Christ, I'll use air quotes there, Church of Christ in Abilene, Texas. And they are going to start a quote-unquote satellite church in a bar. It's, it's, it's going to be a bar church. And it's, and it's designed, they say, to bring people in 
to the gospel, to bring them to the gospel. Friends, I submit to you right now. That's a different kind of gospel. And that's a different kind of church. This is not, this church, the Southern Hills Church of Christ, is not anything like the church you read about in the New Testament. 25 years ago, I lived in Abilene, Texas. And back then, Southern Hills was known as Southern Thrills because even back then, it was recognized that they take a lot of liberties with the Bible. They incorporate a lot of things that are not in the Bible. And even today, they'll have instrumental music. They have women uh, 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 preachers, youth ministers or whatever. They are far, far cry from the New Testament church that you read about in the Bible. A different kind of church is definitely what the Southern Hills, so-called Church of Christ, really is. Now, friends, it's wrong for the Episcopals to have a bar church, and it's wrong for the Southern Hills Church of Christ to have a bar church. Now, is that fair? See, what's wrong is wrong. I don't have a problem criticizing or condemning people who go outside of what is written, whether they call themselves the Church of Christ or they call themselves the Church of, of John Brown. It's still wrong. Because this is the standard. A different kind of doctrine will always produce a different kind of church. Now, this is what we're dealing with. Now, I want to ask you, is this the same kind of church that you read about in the Bible? Is it the same kind of church that you hear us preaching and teaching about on a regular basis? Uh, I know this is going to be a hard time for you to read this, so I'm going to try to uh, pull it up and see if we can't... Uh, uh, read this together. All right. Let's see here. Try to do this. All right. Bar church frequently asked questions. Now, I think this is my understanding is this is uh, uh, from the Southern Hills uh, Church website, and to me, it sounds like they're trying to convince all their members that this is, this is okay. Uh, and I don't know if, if, you're gonna be, if uh, we're going to be able to read that. I, don't, I can't read it from here. But uh, let's see here. It's going to start, they're going to start their, their services at 1130, and it's going to go through 1215. Now, friends, I want to tell you something. In Abilene, you can't serve alcohol before noon on Sunday. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. The bar church is going to have their services right here from 1130 to 1215. Now, what do you think is going to happen at 1201? Probably something's going to happen. The preacher's going to stop, and we're all going to gather around the bar for a, for a round. It's a bar church. Are they really there to hear the gospel? Now, here's a question. Will... Uh, will the bar church? So I can get over to where I can read this. Will bar church worship assemblies have all the elements of the Southern Hills worship assembly? Now, friends, right there is a very interesting question. All right, well, will the bar church worship assemblies have all the elements of the Southern Hills worship assembly? Here's the answer: Bar church gatherings will include carefully chosen secular music along with the singing of hymns and praise songs, prayer, sharing the Lord's Supper, the collection of an offering, and the presentation of the gospel. In other words, Bar Church will have, uh, will have reflect most of the elements of the worship gatherings that take place at Southern Hills Building, but will have a mirror image but will not be a mirror image of the Southern Hills current assemblies. Now, friends, one of the reasons why they're trying to uh, start the bar church is to keep it from looking like the assemblies that are in the Southern Hills. They're saying, in other words, we're trying to present a situation where people will be attracted to, to hear the gospel 
where they are. But friends, they're saying we're going to include a lot of things at Southern Hills. Well, what's wrong with the building at Southern Hills then? Sounds to me like you just want an excuse to go to a bar. Let's be honest with you, friends. People go to a bar church. They don't go to the bar church to hear the gospel. They're going to the bar church because of the bar. That's what people really want. They're not interested in the truth. If they were really interested in the truth, they wouldn't have to go to a bar church. See that? Now, friends, I want to just, I, I just, I have to play this. I found this very interesting because, you know, humor, the, what makes something so funny is truth. Now, this is a comedian, and he's making some observations, some general observations about what people say, what people say when it comes to church, all right? And he's going to make this statement about what people say, some of the, the code that people say. And uh, I'm going to see if I can just, I'm really having a hard time seeing over there. I don't know what happened to our monitor over here. Uh, listen to what he says here. I love the way people talk about their church. Oh, yeah, really cool. You hear someone say about a place, I love it there. I love the music there. Well, that means the preaching stinks. <laughs> yeah, you know where I'm going with this. They say, I love the music. What? I love the preaching. That means the music stinks. You hear somebody say about a place, I love it there. No one judges me. And I can be who I want to be. You're at a bar. Uh, illustration or good observation of what it's really like. People want to go where everybody knows their name, you know. That's the cheers. That's a bar. That's what people really want. Friends, if they really wanted the gospel, they would go where the gospel is being preached. But yet the Southern Hills, the Southern Hills uh, uh, so-called Church of Christ believes that what they need to do is they need to make the gospel look like a bar in order to be accepted. So will bar church look like the regular assembly? Well, no, it, it won't look like it. You know why? Because it's a different kind of church. It's not identical to this book. Friends, I can assure you that if you go to a congregation that is following the Bible, the worship assemblies will be very, very similar. Things might not be necessarily the same order. But the major things will be identical, like instrumental music. You won't find instrumental music in churches of Christ that are following this book. Because the Bible says, sing and make melody in your heart, Ephesians 5, 19. The Bible says to offer up the fruit of our lips. You won't find a band. You won't find a, 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 a concert going on in a church that is identical or following the pattern of this book. Now, you'll find one that's going by something different, a little different doctrine. So that right, this, this statement right here tells me immediately that the church of uh, the Bar Church and the Southern Hills Church of Christ is not identical to the church that I'm a member of. Okay? Here's, here's some more statements here. It says... <clears throat> Will bar church include the use of instruments of music? And the answer is yes. Due to the fact that we anticipate that many of those who attend bar church will have no background in a cappella singing, we will use instruments for the purpose of making the singing of hymns less threatening and providing a musical sound path for all to follow. So singing without a mechanical instrument of music is threatening? It's threatening? Really? God commands singing, and this different kind of church comes over and says, well, doing it God's way is threatening. That's a different kind of church. <laughs> That's a different kind of church. And then they say, is Bar Church a part of Southern Hills? How closely are they affiliated? 
Bar Church is a satellite location of Southern Hills and therefore under the oversight of our eldership. Think of it in terms of our being one church with several locations. Now, friends, that is definitely not identical to the church you read out in the Bible. Do you realize that in the Bible, the elders of one congregation cannot be over another congregation? Now, listen to what Peter says in 1 Peter 5, verse 1. He says, the elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof. Now friends, how can the elders of one congregation be among a group of people across town? And I can assure you that if you look at a map, where the bar church is going to be, it is clear across Abilene. Southern Hills, the Southern Hills uh, Church is on Buffalo Gap Road, which is way on the, the, the southwestern side of town. And the bar church is uh, right in the middle of town on, on uh, basically the main drag. It, it's, it's, it's clear across town. They're not among you. Friends, you cannot be, you cannot say, well, we have elders that are over several locations. The Bible knows nothing about that. Paul called the elders of the church at Ephesus to Miletus. And he told them to feed the flock where they were. He didn't, he didn't talk to them about the, 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 uh, the church at Philippi. He didn't talk to them about the church at Thessalonica. He didn't talk to them about the church in, in Colossia, the church at Rome. He talked to them about the church at Ephesus because that is where they were the overseers. That's where you oversee. You oversee where you are. I don't see how you can oversee somebody that's clear across town. Some people think you can oversee uh, people that are clear across the country or clear across the world. No. Elders are among you, friends. That's a different kind of church. That's a different kind of church. And then the, the third question that we're going to discuss here, third question we're looking at is this. It says, uh, who have the uh, elders, put us up here, who have the elders asked to provide leadership for Bar Church? The eldership has put in place a bar church planning uh, team that is supported by an advisory team of several elders. Friends, nothing about bar church even remotely sounds like the church you read about in the New Testament. And we didn't even got to the bar part. This is not the same kind of church that you read about in the Bible. Southern Hills is not the same kind of church that you read about in the Bible. And the bar church that they are starting to, uh, that they're going to open is definitely not the same kind of church as you read about in the Bible. Bar church. Uh, let me see if I can get up here to... Uh, get this back over here uh, I'm just going to, to read this to you I can't read that and there are some good questions here that we need to answer or I need to consider that they have that they're asking uh, I should have known better enough put this over here uh, let's see here here's another here's another statement Will alcohol be served? Will alcohol be served? Uh, yes. Right here. Bar church meets in a bar. So alcohol will be present and available beginning at noon on Sundays. With bar church's stated mission to meet people where they are, 
we anticipate that alcohol most likely will be consumed during some sometime during the meeting of Bar Church. And here's the meeting time. They start at 11.30 and they go to 12.15. Yeah, they're going to be consuming alcohol. They're trying to meet people where they are. Now, here's some other questions to consider. Can anyone, who can come to Bar Church? Anyone is welcome. Are people under the age of 21 allowed to participate in Bar Church? Yes. The Bar Church planning team will have a process in, in place to carefully check ID. Uh, we will use a system similar to the large X's that bars place on the hands of underage patrons to ensure they are not served alcohol. Additionally, the bar owner will maintain his right to require ID of anyone ordering alcohol. Now, friends, think about this. We're saying use the Bible as a pattern. And they're using as a pattern what you learn in a bar. We're going to put a big X on your hand so you can't get alcohol. Friends, I have to wonder, what are you teaching the children who are under 21? Let's go to the bar. You ought, you ought to feel right at home in a bar. Now, remember, we're meeting people where they are. It's what their, their statement is. Friends, I wonder how many children... Uh, have experienced going to a bar. Is it not the case that having a bar church does not really meet people where they are? Having a bar church does not really uh, uh, provide a setting for people who are used to going to a bar to hear the gospel. It actually provides a setting where people who have never been to a bar can get accustomed to going to a bar. What's wrong with this picture? It's backwards, friends. I wonder if the bar church, if the bar church has considered that what they're doing is they're actually training up children to get accustomed to going into a bar and getting their hands stamped. And guess what? I can just see it. Today is, is little Jimmy's birthday. Little Jimmy, he's been with us for two years, three years now, and now he's 21. Guess what? A round of drinks to everybody. It's a different kind of church, friends. Different kind of church. Uh, friends, um, when people say Jesus met people where they are, where they were, would someone please find that in the Bible? See, but people who are involved in a different kind of church don't really worry about the Bible. They don't really worry about the Bible. Jesus didn't meet people where they were, friends. If you would open your Bible, you know what you'll find? You'll find this. In Luke 5, verse 29, And Levi made him a, a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Jesus didn't go down to the bar. He was in someone's house, and those people came there. I wonder if these publicans and these sinners, if they were a little uncomfortable moving out of their comfort zone, and going to Levi's house. Oh, you know, Jesus, you need to meet people where they are. You don't need to invite them to come to somewhere else. I guess Jesus and Levi didn't understand that people, you know, they, they, they may be uncomfortable going somewhere else. So you need to go out where they are. Friends, Jesus didn't go where people were. They came to him. Matter of fact, let's look again. In Luke 15, verse 1, then drew near unto him all the public and sinners for to hear him. Because of what Jesus, we, we, need, to, we need to let uh, uh, 
Jesus come to where people are. Friends, who is the Lord here? Have you ever noticed that it seems to be a common uh, theme that people want Jesus to be the Lord and then they dictate, dictate to Jesus everything he's going to do? Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, save me. Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me a sinner. Because I've been taught I don't do anything for my salvation, so I'm going to sit back and do nothing. And Jesus, you come to me where I am. Oh, by the way, Jesus, you're Lord. I'm just telling you everything to do. No, friends, Jesus made himself available, but they came to him because they recognized he was the one who could help them. Yes, they had to move out of their comfort zone a little bit. I recall a man named Zacchaeus who climbed a tree just to see Jesus, and Jesus went home with him. Went to his house. He didn't go down to the bar. Luke 7, 37, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet, behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. They went where Jesus was. Friends, this idea of a bar church is just an excuse to be like the world. That's all that is. That's just an excuse for people who claim to be Christians who claim to be following the Bible, to be more like the world. Friends, excuse me, and, and pardon me if I'm wrong here or mistaken here, but it seemed to me that God calls people out of the world. The gospel calls people out of the world not to become more like the world. In, in Galatians 5 verse 21, for example, Paul condemns, among other things, he says, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now let's get this straight. In a bar church, we want people to not be drunken because that's a sin. But we're going to serve them the intoxicant that makes them drunk. Am I missing something here, friends? It seems to me that a bar church is diametrically opposed to getting people out of drunkenness. Can you, can you imagine this, friends? We're going to try to get people to come out of the world and to do that, we're going to go where they are and serve them the very things that they're ensnared with. We're going to serve them the things that they're entangled with in order to so-called bring them the gospel. That's a different kind of church. And you want to know why? You want to know why brethren who have any common sense at all have said for the past 25, 30 years, Southern Hills is not a faithful congregation of God's people? Now here's something they had on their webpage about success. How are they going to measure success of the Bar Church? One year from now, we will consider Bar Church a success if... People who are, who are far away from him are coming to Jesus. Number two, we have regular attendees who invite their friends, who turn in, in who, who in turn invite their friends and so on. Three, if we have people who begin as members of the bar church audience who turn into bar church leaders, in other words, disciples of Jesus are being made who in turn are making other disciples. That would be success. Well, let's see. Will it be a success if that person who is a drunkard, who's a recovering alcoholic, attends bar church, and because you're serving alcohol, because you're openly 
supporting it, if he goes back to wallowing in the mire, 2 Peter 2, verses 20, uh, 2, 20 through 22, Will it be a success if that person who had been clean and sober for X number of years, is it going to be a success if now because he's seeing you and hearing you say, you know what, we're going to open the bar. At 12, at 12 o'clock noon, we're going to open the bar and you can start drinking beer while the preacher's preaching. Will it be a success if he goes back to being a drunkard that will condemn his soul to hell? I guess that'll be a success too. Will it be a success if, as a result, we just start up a whole branch of non-traditional churches? You know, I start wondering, what kind of churches should we have? I mean, if, if Jesus met people where they were, so they say, are we going to have a, an overeater's church for gluttons? Hey, we'll meet them where they are. We're going to meet down here at the... Uh, uh, at, the, at, at this building, we're going to have a big buffet come in. Because after all, Jesus met them where they were. Hey, we gotta get, we got to save the crack head, so we're going to have a crack house church. Hey, 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 we got to meet them where they are, right? Uh, and for the Lord's Supper, you know, we're going to maybe do some lines or smoke some pot. What? And what about the whorehouse church? For all those fornicators out there. After all, you know, we got to meet them where they are. Friend, you see how silly this is? See how ridiculous this is? And, and are we going to have children allowed to come to these churches too? Friends, let me ask you this. When they said that they are going to have children, children are going to be welcome at the bar church. I wonder if the children are going to be able to get up in time to go to bar church. I mean, after all, what if the parent kept the child out late Saturday night going to the bar? What would you think of a parent who took their child to a bar on Saturday night? You say, oh, that's an unfit parent. What kind of responsible parent would do that? Well, we're going to turn around and take them to a bar church on Sunday morning. See? Well, take them to the fornicator church, right? No fornicating before noon, though. Friends, let me tell you, people don't go to bar church to hear the gospel. They go to bar church because of bar. Just like they would go to any other kind of so-called church like we just mentioned here. It wouldn't be for the gospel. If they wanted to hear the gospel, friends, they would go to where the gospel is being preached. Paul said the gospel is the power of God to save. Romans 1.16. Now, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God to save. The power of God to save is not creating an environment that people need to leave so they can hear the gospel. The gospel is the power to save when people realize I need something better. I'm going to leave this environment. It's not creating the mess that they're already wallowing in and say, well, we're just going to throw, throw the gospel in here and you can stay where you are. Friends, the idea of, of meeting people where they are, they don't need to stay where they are. When I hear people say, well, I'm going to come to Jesus just as I am. Well, you may come just as you am, but you can't stay as you am. I know there's somebody out there going, that's not right grammar. You get it. You can't stay the way you are. That's the whole point of the gospel. It's to change people. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul says, be not conformed to this world. Right? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But yet the Southern Hills so-called Church of Christ says, let's create a bar church cause, so we can conform to the world. Why don't you just, create, why don't you just open a bar? Just forget the church. Just open the bar. That's really what what it's all about, isn't it? 
You're not going to save people in a church that's different from the kind of church you read about in this book. And the reason I said save people in the church is because there's only one kind of church in the Bible, and the Bible says the saved are added to that church, Acts 2, verse 47. That church, that kind of church, is the body of Christ, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. There's only one body, Ephesians 4 and verse 4. It's the body of Christ, and Ephesians 5, 23 says he's going to be the Savior of that body. Friends, a bar church, Southern Hills Church of Christ, whatever, if they're not following this book, they're not following this doctrine, they're not following this pattern, they're not teaching people to leave the sinful uh, lust of the flesh, that's a different kind of gospel, different kind of doctrine, and that makes a different kind of church. And that's why, friends, we're going to condemn this kind of business because this is not leading people to heaven. This is leading people to hell. Friends, we're in the business of trying to help people see the way. The way is straight and narrow. It's difficult. Now, friends, the bar church, that definitely fits on the broad way. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Friends, we want to help you. We want to assist you in any way. And if we can help you to obey the true gospel, the gospel that will put you into the church you read about in this book, we want to do that. If you'll believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you'll repent of your sins, that means you've got to turn. Now listen, if you're a drunk, if you're a drunkard, you can't go back to drinking again. That's why we would never say we're going to have church in a bar. We want to encourage you to leave that lifestyle. So you've got to repent of your sins, confess that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then be baptized for the remission of your sins. Now you're a new creature. You've got to forsake the old man of sins. You leave him. You leave him dead and buried. Romans 6, 3, and 4, you rise to walk in the newness of life. Now you're a new creature in Christ. If we can help you, we want to do that. Here's our content information. And if we can be of service to you in any way, shape, or form, we'd like to do that. Until next time, friends, thanks for watching. Stay away from the bar, church. Examine the true church you read about in the Bible. Always ask, what does the Bible say? And you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. 13. Detective Ray Joyce is a nine-year veteran of the Sheriff's Office and is currently assigned to the Criminal Investigations Division, where he has served for about two years. His previous work assignments at the Sheriff's Office had been in the...